Hello everybody in Coffee and Cabs. This is Dennis here again. I'd like to first of all say, hey Buster, this is for you buddy. And we're going to be wrapping this little slice of agate. It's Montana Crazy Lace. And it's from Teal. It's a real pretty piece. And we're going to be putting what we like to call a silk wrap on it. It's another version of the cold forge technique that I use. So here we go. I'm going to be using 14 gauge sterling silver wire. Cut a little bit off here. And as usual, I like to start with clipping off a little bit to get my point going in the right direction. So there's what we have as far as any angle, and I don't think. You know, an exact angle is what we're after here. I just want to get a head start on it. And filing that much off just take that much more long of the time. So I'm trying to get underneath and roll the file around to the top to get that even tapered look. And bust it off with this. One little note about these sponges, the more worn out they get, it seems the better they polish. So I use a rough side and a smooth side now. Uh, one time I had a sponge for over a year. That thing was ragged when it was done. So I'm going to start the, the wrap down here on this bottom. That'll be the bottom of this one. Start out like this. Ends up sitting like that. So, and on the silk wrap, I go ahead and get this part done, and then I look because there's going to be clips on both sides, and I look where I want to start my bend, and that'll be right around this area. So, let's remove that. Kind of keep my place and use my wire tools so I get a nice smooth rounded bend. So that's how it's sitting right now. And here's where I'll go ahead and start forging out what I have already. Being sure to stop right about here though, because when I forge this part, I want there to be a little rise, almost like a, I don't know what kind of effect you would call it, but maybe a roller coaster, coaster looking effect, we'll just see it here in just a second.
So this is kind of out of whack on purpose. I want to show you guys how, how the angle of the hammer will close everything back up. I'm going to hit it at this angle here. And it depends on what part I hit it on that it's going to close it up. Like if I hit it here, this hook part will close up. If I hit it here, the whole thing will close up. If I hit it here and so on. So I'm just going to close it up a little bit. And I'll move on to my other part. Try to get that so you guys can see it. You got a good clear shot of that? Yeah. Okay. So I start right there in the middle of it. Get that part flattened out some. And, and then gently work my way down towards this part. But I'm going to be sure not to flatten out some of it. I just want to leave a little bit unflattened. So it's got a taper to it. Now, there's what that looks like right now. And there's what it looks like on the stone. Now what will happen is I'll bend the wire back and around here and it ends up coming lower and then I make another one here and then we'll go from there but I'm gonna clean my edges up real quick and then we'll move on we're trying to make it so Doug and Adele don't have to download this thing for or upload this thing for an hour or six hours or something sure appreciate you guys help So we're kind of just moving right along, in other words. Getting all the edges just busted down nice, so, so it looks clean, clean, clean. All right, now we can move on. So what I'm going to go ahead and do my bend to the back. This takes a little finger power, and your fingers will be sore when you first start to do these type of wraps. Just got to bear with it. And, go through it because you got to hold stuff in place at times. Uh, I suggest if you're going to start practicing this style to do it with a thinner gauge like 16 gauge is a good one. You can wrap a lot of things with 16 gauge wire. A little pinch, not much. I'm gonna kind of bring it where I want to start down there, and then I'm gonna make my other bend right here, just like that. Okay, it looks uneven, and it is uneven because now I'm gonna take this out, and I know that if I just continue it around a little bit and straighten it out. That's where it needs to be. And I'll go ahead and pound that part out.
really helps to be right over your work too and you can see what's going on and that's about it on that part I'm going to go ahead and clean them up And then I put it back in where it goes. Now holding, making sure that I hold this side as close to the stone as I possibly can. Just take one part and fold it over like this. This bottom wire is going to come up. And that's what we want. So kind of assist it and just roll it over like so. And it's snug in there. I can take my pliers, snug that part down a little bit, and then grab this nice and tight and do this side. And we'll go ahead and do our bail bend. And then I'm going to finish snugging it here just like that. And then pull this, straighten it out, and get ready to do my bail. So here's what we have so far. Now I'm going to do the original bail that I learned how to make it when I first started learning this wrap. It's about two fingers, two of my fingers, in uh, length is where I want it. start out with the bail wire as straight as possible running straight down through the middle of the the piece so here we go back to the hammer Again, starting at the very tip and flattening it out most of the way. And then work my way up and down the bail wire. Going to bend no matter what, it still bends on me, but then you just have to adjust it with the hit, the angle of your hammer hitting the wire. That's about good for that one. We'll go ahead and clean these edges up. I lost my stamp yesterday for 925, so I'm just going to stamp it with TKB, which stands for the knotted branch. And uh, we'll all just realize that it's silver because that's what it is.
this handy here. Okay, so I've got my stamp in there. I'm gonna go ahead and roll it down. I have two different uh, bail pliers. These are the original ones that I started using way back when, and these are my new ones. This has an advantage because it's not tapered at all, and the bail ends up rolling down pretty smooth all on its own. This one was a little difficult to learn with, but. Uh, Eventually, I got the hang of it. So I pull one way. With this hand, I'm pulling out this way. With this hand, I'm grabbing the stone and the wire and everything at the same time, holding everything in place, pulling them apart and rolling. This will help keep the bail wire round inside and instead of getting a bunch of kinks in the bail wire. And there is the silk wrap. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, have a nice day.